what is more reliable, an AMD GPU or an NVIDIA GPU? This has been asked for a long, long time. I want to give you a little bit of input based on someone who owns a thousand of each. I just buy these GPUs to make money and I work them to death. A lot of these have been running for years. And so if you want a true torture test on uh, testing how long a GPU will hold up before it croaks under intense pressure, you know, you're wondering, should I go AMD or NVIDIA if I want to keep my GPU for years to come? Or if I want a GPU that will have any value at all when I go to resell it, I might be able to help you answer that question. Over here, I've got my pile of 29 AMD GPUs. And over here, I have my nine GPUs from NVIDIA. This is a collection of dead GPUs from the past six months that have accumulated. I send them in for warranties and batches because I don't like going one by one sending packages in. <clears throat> These GPUs were all bought around the same time, have all had around the same lifespan, and yet, and I had about a thousand of each, a thousand AMD GPUs assorted and a thousand NVIDIA GPUs. Which one do you think I'm going to be buying more of in the future? I mean, all, all arguments, all data, it all, I mean, I could end the video right here. <laughs> You've got 29, 30 GPUs on this side. You got nine over here that have had issues. Now let's talk about hash rates for the NVIDIA GPUs. They really only excel in one algorithm and that's Ethereum. And you have to modify the BIOS to get there. They're a huge pain in the neck. Overall, they're extremely unreliable. They require far more mini restarts. I, I can't stress enough how much more difficult overclocking with them is. They have typically much lower thresholds for overclocking limits. Um, I, I, I could go on. There's a lot of reasons I generally don't like AMD. If you are mining Ethereum and Ethereum alone, they can be the better value card. But is it worth having three times as many of them go out? I don't think so. Not just because, like, even if you could have a really quick turnaround time, you know, you were really on it, you were warranting these things and sending them out and getting it back, the time lost is still going to add up. And, you know, okay, you get 30 mega hash out of, you know, your 485, 80 or Vega versus... 30 on a 1070 or 22 on a 1060, even in its best case, strongest cryptocurrency, AMD has issues and kind of leaves a lot to be desired. Now I can't say enough about EVGA. I'm not trying to shill for EVGA here. Trust me. I'm not getting money from them, but I, I have, I have over around, I believe 700 EVGA GPUs. And they have been stellar. Uh, I mean, a lot of these are broken just because they have bad fans or the wheel bearings will, not wheel bearings, the fan bearings will go out over time, especially gigabyte cards. Total junk. I mean, it's just, they, they just fall apart over time. I have plenty of cards. Of course, <laughs> now that I'm trying to say that, the few that I'm going for all work fine. But, oh, geez. Like, yeah, you can kind of see. Of the 700 EVGA cards, you want to know how many fan problems I've had? Zero. None. I haven't had one fan bearing go out in 700 GPUs that are EVGA. So I can't really recommend them enough. These are dead, of course, so it's not like they're invincible or impervious to defect. But, you know, they've had a hard life. They've been working away in the mines, and uh, that's what you get. You're going to have a few die. I'm not saying any brand, any maker model, is just guaranteed to last forever. But there's something to be said also for the warranty service. You get EVGA is bulletproof. It's a completely transferable warranty. Uh, it follows the card wherever it goes. If you buy it used, it still has that warranty. Not so much with a lot of these brands. And trust me, yeah, I've tried many of them, and I've been through all their processes. It seems they deliberately make it as difficult as possible to file warranties 
a lot of AMD brand cards. Now, I, I, it, it might seem like I'm trashing on AMD a lot, and that's because I am. It's really, <laughs> there's no two ways about it. If I'm going to go into mining, or if I'm going to be buying more GPUs, I'm going NVIDIA. Now, here's another reason and you ought to consider NVIDIA over AMD. NVIDIA has a much, much, much greater resale value. Why is that? A lot of uh, machine learning applications and a lot of um, render farming applications are using NVIDIA chips. Octane render, certain Blender renders, Redshift, a lot of your big animation softwares, they do not work on your AMD cards. NVIDIA is widely uh, perceived as being the higher performing card for games as well. Obviously, this can vary depending on the game, depending on your setup, but by and large, NVIDIA is king. And the price difference is not that great. Now, you want to know, I paid, I believe, $220, $230 for this card back in its day. Um... That's basically what I paid. I mean, I paid maybe 190, 200 for this slab of junk fans breaking off. Look at that. Broken card, fans still spinning smooth. In this situation, you really you don't get what you pay for with AMD versus uh, NVIDIA. You get way more than you pay for with NVIDIA. Spend the extra 10-15% on getting quality components. This is true for almost everything. For your power supplies, for your motherboards, for your GPUs. Almost everything mining related. There's very few things you really want to or can afford to skimp on. So often the cheapest thing, and this is true in so many areas of life... Uh, tires coming to mind, but um, the cheapest, cheapest possible option is almost never, ever your best option. Well, there you go, guys. I hope the video was helpful for you. I uh, hope I answered some of your questions. Feel free to, uh, if you want to see more of this content, some of the more of these videos all about cryptocurrency and mining and best practices, doing this at scale, doing it over the long term, uh, go ahead, like the video, hit subscribe. And I'll be putting more videos out for you soon. Stick around.